Hi guys, this is Uma from React to the K, and welcome to my G friend Sunny Summer reaction. So, uh, uh, Isaac from the main Classical Musicians React series crew uh, has already checked this out and already started messaging me about it, and I was like, SPOILERS! <laughs> so I'm rushing to check it out late. I'm rushing to check it out late. I'm late checking it out, but I'm rushing to it because I suddenly have a little bit of free time. And I've actually already heard bits and pieces of the album, and I really, really liked what I heard with the B-sides, because Andreas Oberg, um, who's one of my favorite pop song composers, composed one of the songs, or co-composed it. And I've heard the teaser, so I know there's gonna be brass, and it's gonna be funky, and this song composer also composed Mama Moo's You're the Best, so I'm probably gonna like it. I'm excited. Let's go, three, two, one. All days are nights to see till I see thee. To see thee? All right, funk, pop, yeah. Yeah, I like little string shrieks like meow. Oh, that was really pretty, how the, there was main vocal melody, but then the background vocals lined up a tiny bit with the vocal melody. I don't think I misheard it, but it sounded like they created harmonies for like a few seconds, which was really cute. Instead of like two separate melodies, it kind of like, you know, kind of like did that thing. Going halftime, I'm guessing this is pre-chorus. Wow. And I love the hits, how like the percussion and vocal like lines up for a harder hits. Whoa, nice. Nice chromaticism leading up to the chorus. Interesting way to lead up. Yeah. Oh! Yeah, that was the pre chorus, right? Right now, I have the music turned up a lot. And right now, I'm hearing a lot of. It's really hurting my ears, so the high ends are very, very brought out in this. I wish we could hear more of that funky bass guitar, because that's always the highlight of funky songs for me. Like the slap bass. It sounds like it's a slap bass, but I can barely hear it because the high end is so dominating. Yeah, see? Da, da, da! Both vocal melody and the background instrumentals. Chromatic going up. Sunny summer. I'm curious, do you guys hear a lot of s when you listen to this too? Or is this specific YouTube upload just worse quality than like an iTunes or Spotify upload? Okay, probably nothing out the texture. Yep. Take out the percussion. Some cute harmonies. I kind of wish we had more of this down, hype, down up variation throughout the whole entire song. Because I feel like the rest of the song, we're constantly going like this. The texture stays the same throughout. And the only time the texture changes is during the bridge. And I think that's like a thing that most pop songs are falling into, and it's always nice to hear a song that experiments with more variation between a quieter verse and a hyper, hyper? More hype chorus. But that's what the song is, a dance song, so that's why they kept the hype up throughout the entire thing. So yeah, that was really sweet. I think, I'm, I'll just say right now that I really like the B-side songs a lot better than the title track. The title track felt like it would, it set out to do a certain thing and it accomplished it, but nothing in particular stood out to me. Musically, like if I were trying to, you know, like intensely analyze this, I wouldn't find like mind-blowing musical experimentations happening in the song, but I think it's a frickin' jam because, you know, we've got the funky guitar, funky bass guitar, even though you can barely hear it, the yeah! fake 
but fake is to save money, fake strings, and then the cute little vocal melody, sometimes adding in harmonies, like thirds, they harmonize themselves in thirds or fifths. I just love that cute little that little thing. It, 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 it's like a red note. It sticks out within the whole song. It adds, you know, a little bit of color. The more chromaticism you, you, you use in instrumentals or vocal line, the more colorful it will become because you're adding all these tones and sounds that don't fit into the original key. So I thought that was a nice little addition to the song. And yeah, um, I will be doing an album review slash first listen because there's a few songs that I still haven't heard and I haven't heard a full song. I've only heard like the first half of Windy Windy, Vacation, and Love in the Air. I haven't heard Sweetie or the second half of the rest of the songs. <laughs> but what I can say now is Windy Windy modulates in the middle of the chorus and it's weird and Love in the Air is the one that's composed by Andreas Oberg and one or two other people. He loves layering up vocals. Like that's, I think that's his signature thing because in Sentist he has the triplets that he layers up with harmonies and all of Shiny's music that he composes for he always has really like seventh or ninth chord harmonies. He likes using jazz chords for vocals basically. He's a top melody writer so he does the vocal melody and then also he is a jazz guitarist so if there is a guitar part in the song he's the one playing it in the actual track, minus Monster X's Dramarama, he didn't come up with that, but like, he was the guitar player for all of Lee Dong Woo's songs, and he was the guitar player for Red Velvet songs that he composed, and the Shiny songs that he composed, so that's hella cool, and Love in the Air made me go like, whoa, whoa, what's happening harmonically? I cannot tell where we are, what's happening? And yeah, I'm, I'm excited to hear the rest, and fangirl. Alright, see you guys later, bye.